trong nghiệp xưa. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rosie, a journalist at Cambodianess. And today I am joined by a special guest from the Asian Development Bank, ADB, Mr. Jason Rush. Uh, Mr. Jason Rush is the uh, Principal Regional Cooperation Specialist at the Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia Regional Department of ADB. And he is joining us remotely from Manila, the Philippines. Uh, good morning, Mr. Jason, uh, thank you so much for uh, feeding this interview into your hectic schedule and joining us today. Morning, Rosie. Nice to be speaking with you today. Thanks for having me. Yes. Um, Mr. Jason and I are going to talk about the 2023 ADB's uh, Southeast Asia Development Symposium, uh, which will take place on March 30 um, in Bali, Indonesia, uh, complemented by virtual coverage, uh, which means the symposium will be conducted in a hybrid format. So um, Mr. Jason will be telling us all about the symposium and uh, what we should expect from the event where the representative from the country in the Southeast Asia are gathering to uh, discuss for a solution for climate change, as well as uh, a way, uh, you know, to help the countries to um, make a net zero transition. So, Mr. Jason, um, the first question. Um, this year, symposium uh, will be held under the theme, uh, Imagine Net Zero, as in, so why is this specific team is uh, chosen and what are the messages that the participants uh, should know from uh, this year's symposium? Over the past couple of years at COP26 and then COP27, uh, countries throughout Southeast Asia, eight out of 10 countries in ASEAN committed to being net zero by 2050 in line with the global net zero commitments. This is really important, not only for the climate, uh, but for people, uh, especially uh, poor and vulnerable people in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is one of the areas of the world that's most affected by the impacts of climate change. It impacts the livelihoods of farmers, of fisher folk, uh, natural disasters affect people across the region, and those climate impacts are just growing worse. And the only solution is for every country on earth to start moving towards a net zero or zero carbon future. As long as we continue to throw more carbon into the atmosphere, uh, the Im climate impacts will continue to worsen and the poor will suffer disproportionately from that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jason. So um, this year's symposium um, will be open to in-person attendee, which is the first time since the symposium was launched in 2020. So uh, what will be the anticipation of the ADB for this year's symposium? And uh, why is it significant? As you know, now the speaker can talk face-to-face. Uh, -face. Yeah, we're really excited that after the COVID-19 pandemic, we can finally go back to a, a in-person and hybrid format for SEEDS again. So we're, we're holding this year's event on the sidelines of the ASEAN finance ministers and central bank governors meeting in Bali, Indonesia. Our event's on the 30th and the ministers meeting and central bank governors meeting is on the 31st. So our event's the day before. Um, we wanted to do that so we could really convene leaders from government as well as the private sector, civil society, and uh, other stakeholders together to discuss this important issue because we really need all stakeholders at the table to identify solutions. We're expecting about 500 people in, on the ground in Bali. Uh, last year, we had 5,000 virtual attendees, which makes it ADB's largest annual event. Uh, this year, we're expecting even more. So we're really excited, and we have another fantastic lineup of experts from uh, every sector of society, both from the region and globally. So we think it's gonna be a really interesting day for everyone who participates. Participation is free. We're an mm -hmm. international financial institution. We're not for profit. So we encourage everyone to come and join us online. Thank you, Mr. Jason. So um, if people are interested in this symposium and they decided to register to be part of the discussion and just you know to take in the discussion or the solution from the speaker. So uh, what can the participant expect from um, today's symposium? 
from this year's uh, symposium? Sure. Well, I, I think there are two things they can expect. Well, one thing they can expect to hear from some of the leading global experts on climate change and climate finance. And I can go through some of our featured participants in a little bit, if you like. Uh, but in addition to that, this is a very complex problem. Uh, combating climate change cuts through a whole range of sectors, from agriculture to health to finance. So we're going to have a lot of different sessions on all the different components uh, of this issue. So people can look at it from a multitude of angles and get creative ideas and explore new innovations that can help address this serious problem. Thank you, Mr. Chisholm. So they can expect to obtain the greener ideas in order to apply um, in their daily life or how or to deal with the impact that the climate change has on um, the sectors in each country? Some of both. Um, it, our, our, he our headline up uh, in the morning is uh, starts with ADB's president. Um, we also have uh, the Indonesia's finance minister, Sri Mulyani, uh, the deputy secretary general of the United Nations, secretary, Dep secretary general Mohammed, Indi India's G20 Sherpa, Mr. Kant, and uh, U.S. Department of Energy's Secretary David Turk. So uh, all, all these folks are some you know, leading minds in the fight against climate change. Uh, they've been seeped in this issue for years, not only the technical aspects of how you uh, address climate change, but it takes money uh, to adapt to climate impacts, to finance a net zero future. Um, we have to be realistic. There are costs, costs attached to this. So part of the discussions will focus on how we can create win-win scenarios. Uh, countries, especially developing countries, are concerned about some of the costs, and they want to make sure that there's an equitable distribution of the cost impacts. So we need to make sure when we're investing for a net zero future and investing to address climate change, we're ensuring that the poor benefit uh, from this, that it creates new jobs, it creates new economic opportunities, so no one has to be left behind as we transition to a net zero world. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jason. So um, you mentioned win-win scenario. So um, in this in this scenario, it means that uh, uh, we can uh, uh, tackle the climate change issues while we also um, addressing the welfare and the economy of the people. Is that correct? Or, or can you explain more about this uh, win-win scenario? Yes, that's a that's that's exactly right. And um, I think climate and poverty alleviation used to be looked at it as two different things. You'd have your climate experts, you'd have your poverty experts. And I think the whole world has come to increasingly realize that they're intertwined. They're really one and the same. You're not going to be able, with all this growing severity of climate impacts, which are hurting the poor and vulnerable the most. There's no way that we can create a better future for the poor and vulnerable of Southeast Asia if we don't also address climate impacts. Um, but when we're looking at the costs of investing to prevent the, the worst impacts of climate change, we still have to make sure that we're budgeting so that that doesn't come at the expense of you know, welfare programs, children's education, all the other important building blocks. And that means that investment in climate needs to deliver other benefits beyond just mitigating the direct climate impacts. It has to create new job opportunities in the green sector. And one thing we'll be doing at this symposium, we'll be discussing one new report we're launching on global value chains and how they can be green. And we'll also be discussing our early research on a, a new study that will be released in the coming months on green manufacturing in Southeast Asia. It'll be the first time we're giving a teaser about some of our research in this area. So there are ways that countries can, I guess you know, our colloquialism would be have your cake and eat it too. You can uh, you can both invest in climate and create a better future for uh, the most vulnerable members of your society at the same time. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chaitan. So we can create a win-win solution for uh, while we um, tackling the, uh, the issues facing the environment, while we can also help the people from the disadvantaged uh, areas as well. Yes. Um, Mr. Jason, as um, the climate change is accelerating its impact, uh, making the country in Southeast Asia become vulnerable and um, it has uh, it has um, impacted the people. Um, and so what do you think are like the pressing um, issues that facing the regions? And um, 
how can the country in the uh, uh, Southeast a Asia make a balanced policy, you know, um, between um, boosting its welfare, the economy, and achieving the climate goals? Well, I, I can tell you about a, a couple of initiatives ADB is yeah. supporting with governments in the region that are, are kind of doing that. Uh, one major initiative ADB has recently introduced is called the Energy Transition Mechanism. Uh, we've already launched it in Indonesia, and actually we're also partnering with the government of Cambodia uh, to support late last year in 2022, we announced a, a new assistance package to Cambodia to also support energy transition. So we're helping countries transition from fossil fuels to cleaner, greener forms of energy and to enhance the country's energy efficiency. And this is another one of those win-win scenarios. So in Cambodia, it'll be switching from fossils into cleaner forms of energy. We're also supporting solar farms in uh, Cambodia, and it'll also help switch to um, battery energy storage moving forward in the future. Uh, in addition to that, we're doing more um, standard things like enhancing grid stability and making sure there's greater energy efficiency in the country. It doesn't sound exciting, but when you invest in energy efficiency and grid stability, it saves a vast amount of energy, meaning you have to expend less fossil fuels to deliver the same amount of electricity to businesses and households. That's just one example uh, that we're doing in Cambodia. Yeah, so um, th this is one of the examples that one of the example of the initiatives that you have been doing in Cambodia. So uh, can you like, can you tell us like the issues that has caused by the climate change and has impacting the uh, people in the region? Uh, the range of impacts uh, that climate is taking on Southeast Asia are profound. Uh, I think uh, in many parts, especially uh, on the coast of Philippines and Vietnam, uh, they're mm -hmm. pounded by increasingly severe typhoons. In other countries like uh, Cambodia or uh, Indonesia, they suffer from uh, increasing severity of droughts, of flooding, of landslides. These are all climate impacts, and they take an enormous toll. Again, it's the poor that suffer the most when these natural disasters hit. It hurts the livelihoods of farmers. It hurts, it hurts the livelihoods of fisher folks. And, and people that are already living week to week, uh, if they encounter a natural disaster like that, it sets them backwards. So we have to look holistically at a whole package of interventions we can do to try to make these communities more resilient and reverse the carbon uh, footprint that we're currently generating. Um, so this is why we have a whole range of, of sectors at this year's scenes. Part of what we're looking at is technology. There are digital interventions and, and interventions using the cloud uh, that can help advance um, a net zero future. Uh, but I already talked about energy transition, which is a huge component of it. But to make this happen, we have to be able to pay the bills. We have to be able to finance net zero. And governments can't do that alone. It's impossible. The only way we're going to achieve a net zero future is if the private sector comes on board. So we have to create new creative mechanisms to encourage the private sector to invest in a greener future to invest in uh, green infrastructure and green technologies. We have to make it profitable for them. And so uh, and this is another thing that ADB does along with the ASEAN Infrastructure Fund, which is owned by all the countries of ASEAN and ADB supports this initiative as well. It provides so, uh, concessional financing for green infrastructure projects that private sector might be a little ambivalent about investing in, but when we co-invest, we give them that assurance that it's going to be a safe investment for them. So they're willing to go forward with green projects. And if we can get the private sector to crowd in their financing, the um, the possibilities are almost endless. Yeah, so um, the engagement from the government as well as the private sectors are crucial in order to combat the climate change and achieve the net zero. Yes. So, um, right. Mr. Jason, um, as a leading financial institution in the region, um, and also, as you mentioned, uh, uh, eight out of 10 ASEAN member states uh, during the COP26 uh, were committed to um, reach the net zero um, by 2050. So then how can ADB help them achieve their um, climate goal or help them to implement their 
respective uh, climate policies, you know, to deal with this climate change. Well, uh, these days at ADB, we like to call ourselves the Climate Bank for Asia and the Pacific. That is at the core of our business operations model now. And we've committed to providing up to $100 billion by 2030 to support a whole range of climate initiatives across Asia and the Pacific. So we're really putting our money where our mouth is. It's not just talk. So how do we support? We support it through, through the green projects, like I already mentioned, green yes. infrastructure projects. But of course, there's a lot of policy interventions that also need a lot of assistance governments need in coming up with new policies. And, and we need to bring innovations to the doorsteps of governments. So we support a whole range of activities, both on the policy side and on the program and project side. Uh, so governments can help tackle this very, very complex issue. Thank you so much for your well and comprehensive explanation into the symposium, as well as the climate change issue in um, the Southeast um, Asian region. And we are looking forward to this year's symposium under the theme, Imagine um, Net Zero ASEAN. And uh, we are looking forward to a fruitful discussion in this year's symposium. Thank you so much for joining uh, us today. Thank you, Mr. Jason. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to welcoming you and we encourage everybody to register online, seeds.adb.org. Registration is free and we'd love to hear from all of you and have you participate. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Jason. Thank you.